Hi everyone, welcome to this podcast on all the things you may have to write in the English GCSE language exam. So we're going to look at different examples, most of them are going to be A star examples, but I'm also going to show you lower grade examples so you can see the difference and the things that you should avoid. So here are all the formats that you will have to write or you have to have at least two of these in your exam. So we've got letters, speeches, articles, reports and reviews. So we want to get you from this feeling when you're going to see these things in your exams to this feeling of high-fiving them. Hopefully you're not going to smack a guy in the face like, like this guy, but hopefully you get the feeling of the high-five. Whack. So here's the mark scheme. Um, it's pretty much the same for all of them. So if you haven't uh, so if you've forgotten, it's 13 marks out of 20 for content. So that's how you're writing your structure, if you're writing formally or informally, how mature your arguments are, if you link your paragraphs and all of the deforest down here to get the top marks. And then it's seven for spelling, punctuation and grammar. So this is your sentence structure, your tenses, your spelling, punctuation and grammar. So if we go to look at letters first, so hopefully you're going to get the feeling of this dog when you get into that exam of sheer excitement that you've got a letter so first of all if we look at this example so I'm not going to read all of these through in this video because we haven't got the time so if you just want to pause any video and just read it through and then I'll speak about it so this letter got an E something that we definitely want to avoid in the exam so like I said feel free to read it but basic errors of this letter are there's no second address um, it's very vague, so it doesn't even speak about a specific job. It just says, I'm writing to apply for a job vacancy. It's a boring start, so it's I am writing, full stop, I would like, full stop, I am experienced. And there are also basic spelling, punctuation and grammar errors. For example, with a capital where it shouldn't be. This is just proofreading. It's meant to say I am free. They've given a cross, um, an extra C. Um, they haven't even put a full stop at do so just basic areas here there's also no no paragraphing it's all just one big block of writing it's also got the wrong closing so if we start with dear sir or madam we've got to end with yours faithfully we haven't got any um, direct address or any language or devices or extended complicated vocabulary to get the high grades um, the examiner's basically said the same as me so it's very brief although the tone is appropriate is written formally the fact that it's so short makes it hard to get into the top bands so here's the difference, this is the A star version of the letter, so this is pretty much a perfect letter. So this is the annotated version, so we actually use this letter in our lessons. This is from Mr. Bruffs, thanks very much Mr. Bruff for um, this resource. So if we just look at it, it's first of all it, it's obviously a lot longer, it's a lot more deeper, it's got more depth to it, but the addresses are all correct, it's set out how it should be. Instead of a boring start like we had before, this one starts with two adjectives, responsible and mature, comma, the young adults of underscore are eagerly, so we're using the motive language here. Then it has rhetorical questions. It starts with a sentence with a word ending in ly, and later on words ending with ing. It's also got complex sentences and use a colon, so I will get straight to the point. Colon, I'm writing today to ask you to consider the abolishment of school uniform. So the difference between I'm writing this letter with responsible and mature, the young adults, blah, 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 and then finishing the paragraph with I am writing today is massive and it definitely um, ups the standard of the work. It also uses statistics. It uses a lot of deforest throughout. So it uses rhetorical questions. It uses direct address, directly written for the reader, UC. It uses different sentence structure. It uses emotive language. Up here it uses power of three, the richest, most powerful, most successful nation in the world. It also uses something called second guessing. So we have talked about this in the lesson. So this basically, um, second guessing, means that you're almost imagining what the, per the person reading it and almost imagining what their response is going to be. So this letter is persuading the headmaster to stop um, the kids wearing school uniform, that they should be able to wear their own clothes. And here is, I imagine you will say that school uniform encourages good behaviour, but I disagree. So it's almost in the first letter, imagining what the headmaster is going to say and almost saying to him, well, I've already got an answer for that one. So if you can imagine but second guessing into your letter, that really would um, show the examiner that you mean business. So I've just put a definition here of, and second guessing anticipates how the reader will respond and argues against it. So we're using all the deforest here because the idea of this letter was to persuade the headmaster. So because we want to persuade the headmaster, we should be using persuasive devices. And this is pretty much a perfect answer. Speeches. 
So here is the speech that would have got an E. Okay, so the idea of this speech was to do a speech um, explaining why your choice of charity is a good one and giving suggestions about the fundraising events that could be held. So it's pretty much pretty a dry question, but there's basic capital letter errors. So we start hello um, with uh, lowercase h. Um, start sentences with lowercase letters. There's a lot of spelling uh, mistakes. Information wonderful barbecue thousand. All these are spelling mistakes. Um, there's no persuasive devices again. So if we're trying to persuade people or trying to entertain them, remember a lot of these speeches are meant to be lively. They're, they're meant to be listened to. So you've got to try to make them interesting or humorous or catch the reader's attention. So there's no persuasive devices. Um, it does engage the audience a little bit, so it does start with hello everybody and thank you for coming and it ends with thank you bye. So they're not very catchy, they're not going to hook the audience. Although it does engage the audience, it doesn't do it in a particularly great way. And also from a spelling punctuation and grammar, um, the paragraphs are a little bit all over the place. There's hardly any punctuation. It's definitely E standard work. So we look at the A star version. First of all, we can tell straight away it's a bit longer, so there's a lot more detail, and it's actually structured a lot better. There seems to be an intro, main point, and then a conclusion. So it's a, it starts off using rhetorical questions, so it's a catchy way of starting. Do any of you remember the first mobile phones that came out? So even though it's a rhetorical question, it also is directly addressing the audience. So do any of you remember? It's almost like this speech person is speaking to the whole audience and it's getting us all involved. And it also says roughly the size of a shape of a large brick with an aerial that could probably pick, pick up television signals. So already you're establishing that it's meant to be a bit funny. This is a humorous tone, as a, the examiner says down here, engaging and humorous, showing a clear focus on the intended audience. Content is very good and the piece is well shaped. So it's accurate. So spelling, punctuation and grammar is pretty accurate as well. Um, it also uses sort of complicated vocab compared to the other one, so technological gold mines. So it's a lot more, a lot more interesting. The, the word usage is much more entertaining. So we also have power free. Look after it. Take the precautions and be grateful that you live in a generation of trendy mobiles. So lots of um, emotive language used throughout. And it's another interesting closing. Oh, and make sure you turn it off in school. So because this speech is directed at fellow classmates, here's an interesting and pretty clever way of saying again that we know who we're speaking to. The audience is made clear. So another perfect answer. Articles. So the article, I'm just going to show you the A-plus words, and so this is another one we just um, looked at. This one's called Pensioners Pollute, and the question was saying that why are the elderly to blame for today's problems? So it's a pretty tough question, but if we look at um, this version, so straight away we can see that it starts with a catchy title, so Pensioners Pollute. So even though it's alliteration, but it also tells us a little bit about what the um, article is going to be about. And this continues in the um, subheading of the first or the first paragraph. As current surveys show, 75% of old people hold young people responsible for today's problems. Andrew Bruff suggests today's youth are not the key offenders. The elderly had the planet ruined before they even arrived. Those two and a half lines, basically the point of them is it's a little introduction. It's almost a spoiler for the audience to know that Whatever is in here is going to be explained more thoroughly in the paragraphs below. So straight away, he, um, the writer uses a statistic. We use emotive language with offenders, ruined the planet. But also we use a semicolon early on to show the examiner that we know how to use advanced punctuation. Like uh, Add to that point, there's also a, a semicolon towards the end um, saying the same thing. We, so we go in by saying we now have a semicolon and we also end it by saying we now have a semicolon. So I won't go all through all these because we've done it before, but these are all the language devices, all the persuasive devices the writer uses that makes it get up those bands into the A star category. So all these devices, we're trying to entertain the reader, we're trying to persuade the reader in this particular um, article about why the elderly are to blame. So all these devices are used really well to get those top marks. Reports. Okay, so this is a C grade. So why is this a C grade? Okay, so it's it's very well structured. It's got a good title, very clear, concise title. It's split into relevant sections, so introduction, uh, problem with facilities, and so on. Um, it basically fulfills all the bog standard things that all the features that a report should. It's not fantastic by any stretch, but it, it's quite good. There's not too many spelling, punctuation, and grammar errors. Um, but we could argue that it's perhaps not formal as it should be. So this one here is an A star. 
um, an A version. So this is basically the same question. So straight away we can compare them. So this title is a report to the head teacher on blah, blah, blah. This one is problems relating to Red School Science. So straight away we can just see it's a little bit more formal. The um, subheadings are still in and they haven't really been changed. This one down here has the name and date, which a proper report should have. But if we even look at the start, there was an accident in our science lesson this week. That's the C. The A, last week we fortunately avoided a very serious accident. So straight away you can just see it's a bit more mature, a bit more formal. Um, the language used for the audience is just a bit more appropriate. So the yellow in the yellow highlighted section here, a boy burnt his arm owing to the faulty Bunsen burners and the wonky floors. Compares to the laboratories were built as temporary building solutions almost 30 years ago. My point here is that we shouldn't really be using words like wonky or boy. So that the boy could be a student or a year 10 student, a bit more precise. Wonky floors could be unstable floors. And instead of making it sort of um, a pronoun of we, it should be a more objective. So the benches that are in the science rooms as opposed to we sit on them. Um, also towards the end, uh, the recommendations, this one I think we need to spend more money. So this one finishes with, in the short term, the school needs to seriously consider the future of these classrooms. So the main differences between the A and the C in this one is just the formality of the writing and also the language use. This one is the vocab is a lot more complicated and a lot more extensive. This one is simpler language. Reviews, so last one. Yeah, so this is the D version, okay? So, um, it's got the basic idea, so it doesn't really give away the plot too much. So obviously in a review, you don't want to give away the plot. And it also has got the basic form, so it gives you uh, the title, it gives you the genre, it gives you the rating. One thing though it's not so great is the paragraph is not particularly clear. It's a little bit all over the place. We've only got two paragraphs in the whole piece of writing. Uh, it's not really split into intro and points or subheadings. One thing also is it talks too much about the story. The idea of uh, the film review is you're giving your opinion on it. Even though it doesn't give too much away, there's not too much of a review of the film going on. It's just telling the reader what happens in the film, which we want to avoid. Another thing is this person's given it 10 out of 10, and it's and the person described it as the best book I have ever read. However, that doesn't really come across in it. It's not particularly interesting. There doesn't seem to be too much passion behind it. If you were writing about the best film you'd ever seen or the best book you'd ever read, you probably try to be a bit more, give it a bit more oomph. There's not, not too many language devices here. Um, there's also a few spelling, punctuation, and grammar issues. It's also got a bit of a boring ending. I'd better not write any so as not to spoil the ending. So that's not really what you expect. You want to maybe have a hook. So if all those things I just talked about, if the writer would change those, they definitely get that from a C into a B. So feel free to read through the examiner's comments. Um, that's pretty much reflects what I've just said. Okay, so here's an A star version that a student's done. And straight away we can see okay we'll go to my uh, annotated version so it's on star wars Re revenge of the sith which is the third one of the the more modern star wars one so straight away interesting title star wars episode three the revenge of mediocrity yeah so that's a bit of a pun it's a bit of a play on the title which is revenge of the sith i've got a rhetorical question at the end of the first paragraph which which has got quite a good little technique, as in it's asking a question in the first paragraph, and then through the rest of it, we're going to answer that question that's been originally posed, and that actually starts the second paragraph with the answer. Okay, so it's got a catchy intro, it's got lots of adjectives to describe it. Obviously, a review is someone's opinion, so because of that, it's going to be very descriptive. So it's got an explanation from the writer. The answer blah, 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 is a resounding no, so really strong opinions here. Here we've got a little little paragraph about the plot, but just that. Unlike the other one, which was a lot about the plot, this one has just two or three lines telling us very briefly about the plot. Here we've got an interesting sentence starter with a word ending in L-Y. Uh, we've got a, a, a metaphor here, so we're comparing something. So the, plot, the, the person here is comparing the plot to a skeleton. And then we've got a semicolon, we've got another motive and um, adjective, so spectacular, mind-numbing. And we've got a bit of direct address here to the reader. You'd probably be better off sitting at home. So it's almost like this person is directly speaking to us. Here we've got a quote from the film, which you could do in yours. Another interesting sentence starts of a word ending in L-Y. And then almost an interesting technique here. It's a direct address, but not to the reader, but actually the director of the film, George Lucas. I'm sure you could have done better Mr. Lucas. It's very catchy that he's talking directly to the director. And this person's given it a rating of two out of five. Okay, so good luck. Hopefully that's given you... 
from looking at different A star examples and actually C and E grade examples should give you a good insight into what is expected of you and what you can do to get those great grades. Thanks very much.